Um, we're going to conclude today's story um, at the Dallas Municipal Building. Uh, constructed in 1914, the Dallas Municipal Building was Dallas's third city hall, and it housed all of its city offices. Um, the mayor, municipal departments, council chambers, city jail was on the fifth floor. Um, and a vehicular ramp was at the back of the building that went down to the basement that served at that point in time the medical and coroner's office. In, um, nine, in the mid-50s, a, a large addition was made to the building, um, and this addition replaced those 1914 ramps with a new ramp that also went down to the building, and this time the police department intake was in the basement of the building. Um, so you can see the 1914 building and its addition, the 1950s building, next to it from Commerce Street. Um, in 1963, the building served as Dallas City Hall. As we've had um, previous speakers have noted, Lee Harvey Oswald was apprehended about 1.50 that afternoon. Shortly after 2, he was brought to the Dallas, to the Dallas Police Department, who had their offices on the third floor on suspicion of murder of Officer Tippett. Um, he was brought to the third floor. Um, there's a, I'll have a plan in a minute, but a, the homicide and robbery department um, and Captain Fritz's office was in that. Um, um, and he was interrogated that afternoon. This is Friday afternoon. And he was interrogated that afternoon, that evening he was charged with um, after Officer Tippett's murder. He was later charged. They realized that they were looking for the same man when they were looking for the assassination of President John F. Kennedy. And they realized he was at City Hall already. And he was subsequently charged after midnight in JFK's assassination. Um, he spent Friday night in the jail up on the fifth floor. There's a, a private elevator that takes, you know, secure elevator that takes prisoners up there. And then on Saturday, the 23rd, the interrogation continued. At this stage of the game, um, one of the unique aspects of this whole series of events was television. Television had just, you know, this was 1963. Most people had TVs in their homes, not all. It was the new media. It was, you know, there was questions whether it would replace um, newspapers, print media, or not. Um, and with the assassination of JFK, newspaper people, media, flew in from all over the world to Dallas. Um, the jail on the third floor, or the city hall on the third floor, you can see the photographs. Um, this was the, here's the public corridor. This is the side corridor that goes to the police office. And this was robbery, homicide and robbery, and then, um, the detective's office was right there. The jail, the elevator that went to the jail was right there, so they would bring um, Oswell down out into the corridor, this public corridor with the mass of people, and then into the door we saw on the previous slide, and then he would be interrogated. There were lots of things going on that day. He was being taken for fingerprints, he had family coming in, different people were speaking with him. So he was, you know, um, the scene of him being led up and down the hall happened on more than one occasion. Um, some people have estimated there was probably upwards of 100 media there. The police and the city did not really stop the media from coming up into the public corridors. And you can see on the photograph on the right, you know, Oswald is being led down those corridors. It was just a little short of bedlam, shall we say. But that's the third floor. That office um, and that room is still intact. Um, um, this corridor is outside. You go inside this door and you're in this space and then there is um, the office in which he was interrogated by Captain Fritz. And it's the same office and that's a photograph from 1963. Uh, this photograph was taken just a couple months ago, the one on the left. Um, so that's the third floor where all, you know, he was spent, you know, Friday, pretty much all of Saturday off and on. And then, oops. And then on the fifth floor, he was taken to the jail cell. And they have a private, they have one area where they would use it for people that needed seclusion. And it had three cells and he was kept in the center cell um, right there, um, that's the door to the center cell. 
on um, Friday night and Saturday night. Um, the photograph of him in the DPD intake is down in the basement, um, and that's where you know the shots were taken, et cetera, et cetera. And then on Sunday morning, after the police had completed paperwork, he was going to be moved to the Dallas County Jail. This was standard procedure. Uh, the transfer would take place in the basement. Um, in a perfect world, it would have taken place in secret in the basement, in a secure environment, but word leaked out and the media came back again because they wanted to see the transfer. Um, they police, you know, shuffled cars and armored cars to get him out in a position and uh, he came out through the doors or this entryway. These doors were not there at the time, but the um, elevator was back there. He was coming out this way. The car was parked in this area. These doors were actually back at this point. So, you know, he moved through these doors. This was open. They were bringing him to the car and they were going to take him up that ramp and out. And uh, Jack Ruby appeared out of the crowds. Um, and this is the next series of shots, which I'm sure you're all familiar with. The one on the left is Jack Ruby actually coming out of the crowd, kind of bursting through. Uh, the police reports say that, and the Warren report, you know, have um, comments and interviews with the police, and they said when they brought Ruby out, the crowd just surged, you know, and they really, it was kind of a strenuous situation, and through that, Jack Ruby lunged, and the photo on the right was taken by Jack Beers with the Dallas Morning News of Jack Ruby approaching Oswald as he's being led to the car. Um, that came out in the paper that evening, that afternoon. Everybody thought that that was the, you know, just a, you know, the, patted Jack on the back, they said congratulations, I'm sure that's going to be a Pulitzer Prize, isn't that wonderful? Uh, the photo on the right was taken by Robert Jackson and they say, they say, both of the men say, you know, you don't know what you're going to get. You're just taking a photograph in reaction to a movement you perceive, you know, um, and Robert Jackson took this photograph about a sixteenth of a second later. And it actually is a moment when you know Ruby um, bullet is entering you know Oswald, and he's reacting to that. And of course, that's the one that won the Pulitzer Prize the next year. Um, Rob Jack Beer said he had a really good day until he opened the paper the next morning, and he realized that um, that was it. You know, his good day was was over. So anyway, that is um, where the story ends. Um, after 48 hours in Dallas City Jail or City Hall, um, Oswald was in fact left, but not under the circumstances anybody would have anticipated. Um, the building is still owned by the City of Dallas. It is a City of Dallas individual landmark. It's also in, within the Harwood Street Historic District, so it's got another level of landmark designation to it. It's a recorded Texas historic landmark, a state archaeology landmark, uh, both through the Texas Historical Commission. Within the Dallas Downtown Historic District National Register District, it is a contributing building at the local level of significance. Preservation Dallas, through the leg Legacy Project, has recently written a nomination, an amendment, to increase the level of significance for the Dallas City Hall, the Dallas Municipal Building, from local to national, in conjunction with the events um, of November 22nd to 24th, 1963, and we're still waiting to hear from the National Park Service on the status of that.